Let me take it down. <coughs> Verse 10. <coughs> Bishop chapter 6. Verse 10. I need to be showing the Lord in my depot. Put on the foot of our class so that you can take the stand against the devil. Okay. Let's, uh, let's just stop there. Are you all there? Yeah. Okay. So he said, put on the full armor of God so you can take your stand against the devil's king. And then he said in verse 12, yes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, but against the authorities, against the power of the dark, the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So there's such a thing as the heavenly realm. Here, there, that's where everything happens. And you can see that the world is not anything just visible. There is an invisible that. It is not just visible. There is a spiritual that we are not able to see because we are in our bodies. Are we following this? Okay, but I am. Now, it says that it is an active realm. It is not, you know, everybody's just there, passive. There is action that is happening. And there is really indeed a a plan. There is an active, proactive plan to uh, destroy the plans of the Lord, which is to restore all mankind and all of His creation. That is, there is that plan. Now let's look at it. Let's go on. Uh, verse twelve. Therefore, uh, verse thirteen. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes. You may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth, buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Nakikita niyo po ba? Meron, ano? Meron puwersa na dumadating po. Are we following this one? Now, some of you might start to feel already, parang no? Parang, oh, no. Oh, okay. Okay, then. So, uh, how many of you are starting to feel parang uh, a little bit, you know, uh, anxious about this, maybe? So, parang, um, awkward. What's your sense? Anyone feeling a little bit uneasy uh, about this? Anyone? We're good? Huh? Let me go. Uh, what does it uh, make you feel when you talk about this? Like, Kaya yung mga nasa likod, how do you feel about it? Huh? Ah, uh, yung iba, How do you feel about it? Okay, Ikaw, Huh? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, parang, I know, that's why people don't talk about it, eh, parang, you know. But I'd like us to see that this was actually something that Jesus already conquered. Huh? So, uh, let's go deeper, Pat. Huh? So, where, what, what actually happened? If you turn your Bible to Isaiah 14, if you turn there. There are two parts of the scriptures that shows us a glimpse of what happened before the creation of heaven and earth, before Genesis chapter 1. In Isaiah chapter 14, there was a song about Israel conquering the king of Babylon. So in the scriptures, it has already been perceived. Uh, the Middle East conflict that we actually see today is actually in the Bible that's been in the Bible present there from the very beginning. But in Isaiah chapter 14, when when the Bible was talking about Babylon king, Babylonian king, he was actually showing him being embodied by Satan. 
So when you look at chapter 14, you see parts of the scripture where there is a song about Israel winning over the king of Babylon. So there was a song against the king of Babylon in verse 3, and here in verse 12. So here we see Satan embodied in the king of Babylon. Are you there? How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to earth, you who once laid low the nations. And then you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. There are five eyes here, they call it the five races of I will be paid in heaven. I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars or the angels of God. I will sit and throne on the Mount of Assembly, which is the Council of the Babylonian God, what we refer to when they want to rule the universe. So I will sit and throne on the Mount of Assembly on the utmost heights of the sacred mountain. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. That's where God reigns. I will ascend there and I will make myself like the most the most high. So verse 12 says, how you have fallen from heaven. Now look at verse 15. But you are brought down to the grave. To the depths of the dead. So this is where we get to see one of the scriptures that refers to Satan um, before the fall uh, in Genesis. Let's look at another one, Ezekiel 20. the beauty of uh, Lucy this guy, this guy, this guy. verse 13 you were in Eden you were in the garden of God this time um, the one that we talked about was the king of Tyre and he um, verse 13 Ezekiel 20 you were in Eden the garden of God Every precious stone adored you. And then there was a list of stones. And in verse 14, you were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I will make you. So the cherubims, when you look at the uh, tabernacle of Jerusalem, of the Jews, there's always these two angels with their wings guarding the, the uh, they call it the mercy seat. That's where the presence of God is. So, there are two cherubs with their wings protecting That's what the cherubims. So, in, in heaven, the one that guarded the throne of God in worship was the anointed Shechem, which was Lazarus. The scriptures, when you look at it, there are three archangels. The archangel of messages, that's the reason why he's always the one sent to give messages. That's archangel Gabriel. And I think you see this over and over again, the archangel Michael, the one of our. And the one of worship was actually that's the anointed shadow, which is Satan. So here we see it. It says this, verse 14. You were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. You walked along the paved stones. You were blameless in your ways from the days you were created. The wickedness was found in you. Now verse 16 down talks about the fall and the judgment. Though you are widespread trait, you were filled with violence. So I drove you in this grace from the mouth of God, and I expelled you, O guardian cherub, from among the fearing stones. For your heart became proud on account of your beauty, and you corrupted your wisdom because of your strength. So I threw you to the earth. I made a spectacle of you before me. And so on and so forth. So that was before uh, the creation of everything. Who made you get back? <laughs> so, 
Um, when, the, when Jesus won on the cross, he won against evil. So what happened with, was when Satan came, he actually deceived Adam and Eve. So what happened was God created Adam and Eve. When he created Adam and Eve, he gave them the free will. So he placed in the middle of the garden a garden and of the tree that was called the tree of good and evil. Satan gave to him. And with the nature of Satan that he wants to become like God, he wants to take the God, he wants to worship the spirit of God. He didn't know who he was. 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 He and when it was given to Adam, Adam actually took him. And the entire uh, man, uh, human nature, actually fell into it. And we also see, because it's not only Adam and all it was in, even the entire nature, and it, we call it second law of thermodynamics. Anything that is, is here on earth, no matter how to, decays eventually. Mubili ka na bago kotse, di ba? Kahit ang ulimis mo pa niya, new car of mine, it is actually going to decay. Everything that there is, is actually going to decay. So we belong to a world that is decaying, no matter what kind of change we do, everything is actually going to decay. No matter what kind of stewardship we place on the nature, everything is decaying. Mankind, no matter how much we take care of our bodies, you know, white hair comes to appear, our knees, they start to shake, and the red light is or not, the red comes out, the water water begins refiling this, and eventually, everything will die. Now, um, the question is, the plan of God has been destroyed. So how did he resolve it? He resolved it by sending his son. So when he sent his son, his goal was to redeem the entire world, beginning with man. And so he, 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 he brought his son. His son lived in this world. And his son did not sin. Because he did not sin, the Bible says the grave cannot move. And so when he died on the cross, he resurrected from the dead. First Corinthians 15, happy Easter, we're about to celebrate Easter, tells us that First Corinthians 15 tells us at one point there were 500 witnesses that were still alive when Paul was writing the book of Corinthians. They could have contested what Paul was writing in the book of Corinthians. But nobody did. These were witnesses that Jesus did get resurrected. Are you following this? And so he said, anyone who believes in him, I am the resurrection of the light. Anyone who believes in me will die, and they will live, and they will no longer die if we believe in him. So anyone who is now saying that Jesus died on the cross and he said, it's finished, I've done what needs to be done. The entire world can be restored back to God now. Beginning with him. The man, man has now found a way back to God. Through the Son. Who paid for all the sins that were committed. Because of the fallen nature of Adam. And because of Adam. Are we following this? So all of this now has been the you know? The problem is, while we are here, we have to deal with the fact that we have a fallen nature. And there is. The devil and the demons lurking around. John chapter 10. If you turn your Bible. 